My Thunder Laser Nova Plus will run at 1200 millimeters a second, but there's a lot more to speed than speed. If you're new to lasers, maybe you've just picked up your Bolt or a Nova Plus as I just did. There's so much to learn about these lasers. And I think it makes sense to focus more on quality of that engrave before you start to focus on speed. Today on LaserNug. It's kind of like the tortoise and the hare, but okay, it's not like the tortoise and the hare, but sort of. I was running some engraved settings for my maple, which I'll give you right away just for those that are interested. And then I wanted to show you a couple of things that I kind of stumbled across, which helps to answer many questions I've had over the last few months from you good folks about speed and power and your LPI settings. But first, I'll give you my engraved settings for maple. I'll drop down to my material library and I'm in my Nova Plus library. Let's go down to maple. And this is real maple, not plywood. Using a two and a half inch lens. These are my engraved settings. 800 millimeters a second, 70% power min and max, no air, fill mode, and 1200 LPI. One pass. I'll leave that up for a second. There we go. And as always, I'm happy to share settings. Uh, these are kind of like starter settings or settings that I'm really pleased with now. But over time, just like yourself, I'll continue to refine those as I get more and more experience working with that particular material. But I hope they're helpful for you if you've just got your Nova Plus series laser. So more and more over months, I started getting the same kind of question. GP, you've got a Thunder Laser Bolt, which was my first laser. It runs up to a thousand millimeters per second. Why are your settings kind of always between 400 and 800? It's a good question. And now that I've got the Thunder Laser Nova Plus, it runs up to 1200 millimeters a second. But you've probably noticed I have not provided you any material settings to date that run at 1200 millimeters a second. And that's because there are two other factors involved. Your lines per inch, your LPI, and your power. And the combination of those three elements together is what tends to produce the speed at which you want to run your engrave at. And I want to show you an example from the last few days. I've been running my maple settings. This is my last test board and I'm going to try to hold it up as best I can for you to see it. And hopefully you can tell the difference in the shading of the brown engrave on each of these different designs. You'll notice I've run each of them twice in my final testing. This guy and this guy, these two and these two. Don't worry about the guys at the end. We'll talk about them in a second. If you're able to see it in the camera, I can tell you this is much darker, more beautiful, rich kind of a brown than this one. But here between these two, this guy is the darkest and in my view, richest looking brown. And similarly here, this guy is a much darker brown than this guy. Very consistent, all of them. Really nice shading, great, consistent engrave. They're all engraving down to about 1.3 millimeters in depth, which is great for maple, for me anyways. They were all run at the same speed. But surprisingly, the darker colors coming out are the ones at a lower power than the ones that came out lighter. Why? Lines per inch. If you'll take a look at my various different letter H's, these were run at much higher speeds. And as I started to bring the speed down and play with the power a bit, you'll notice I had a super light engrave here. A little bit darker, still light though. Darker and darker still. This one was a blowout. <laughs> that was, I would call a burn. That was not an engrave. I would never use that setting. But I eventually came down to what I believe is a reasonable speed, which was 800 millimeters per second, not 1200. Because the combination at 800, I was able to achieve this nice rich brown, was at a lower power setting, but a higher LPI than this lighter engrave. Similar with these two, similar with these two. And at the end of the day, this is where I ended up. Both of these are done at the same power level and the same LPI and the same speed. In fact, that's the setting I just gave you. Let's take a look on screen. So we have these two designs here. This guy here, it's dad's kitchen. And that's the grill master. And you'll see here my settings are at 800, 70, 70, 1200 LPI. What I just gave you. If you play with fill all shapes at once, fill groups together, fill shapes individually, on this particular type of design, 
you're going to find that it's going to take even longer. If I fill shapes individually on such a small tight design, I'm going to grab this design here and when I take a look it's going to take 35 minutes to do this four inch by one and a half inch or two inch design. If I come back into these settings and I change it back to fill all shapes at once, which is what I have it set at, you'll see it takes eight minutes and 56 seconds. Now, if this design was much larger and the elements of the design were spread out further and there was large gaps or spaces in between them, you might find the reverse or the inverse relationship. Because right now, as you know, the laser is going back and forth horizontally across this engrave. But if it has to go from here, then jump a big space and go over here, then come back, jump a big space, go over here. That's where you may find that those individual engraved settings are going to help you out and save you a lot of time. But let's get back to the power uh, and the speed equation. We're currently running with this design at, I believe I said eight minutes and 56 seconds or thereabouts. What happens if I said, you know what? I'm going to try to push this up to a thousand and I just changed nothing else but my speed. Watch what happens. How long does it take now? Now it's going to take 10 minutes. So basically an additional minute and four seconds to run the exact same design, which kind of is confusing because you'd think if it's running at a thousand millimeters per second, instead of 800, you would think it would be faster but it's not. And that, as I've learned over months, is because the laser head's going so fast, it requires more time to slow down, stop, speed back up again on either side of the design as it's trying to engrave. And that takes time. So this kind of, I hope, helps to provide that example that many of you have asked for as to why I don't often have settings that are way up at like 1,000, 1,200 millimeters per second. It's not because I don't ever want to use it, it's because quite often it's not as efficient a burn. So let's drop this down to 600 millimeters per second and put this back to 1200 where it was. Now look at the time. It's now taking roughly 42 seconds less time to run it at 600 millimeters per second than at eight. So if I wanted to, I could continue testing now at 600. However, if I'm slowing it down, I most likely am going to have to change my power setting. And I may also have to adjust or play with the LPI setting, which can have a negative or positive impact on that timing. So at the end of the day, I could save what it was 40 some odd seconds per board in theory, if I could leave the same power in LPI. However, with this type of material, I don't need to go any further. I'm super happy with the output. I love that richness of the brown that I'm getting, that consistent engrave, and that consistent 1.3 millimeter depth on the maple board. But if I was running production of hundreds of these things, for example, you guys will remember I just did a video a few weeks ago. I had a really good month, by the way. I had two big orders this month, and you'll remember I showed you one of them. There was 100 pieces. If I was running production on smaller items, and I could save 40 seconds per piece, then I'd absolutely spend more time trying to refine these to the fastest, absolute fastest settings. But for the maple boards, I'm okay with spending an extra 40 seconds on what might be 10 boards. And just a couple other examples. Drinkware, tumblers. Over a year ago, if you've been with the channel, you may recall I had settings at 400 millimeters a second. After gaining a little more experience now, I've been able to play with those settings and I can engrave most of these brands of tumblers you see here at 800 millimeters a second. That's a huge time saving, but I didn't start there. And you folks know I love acrylic. I do a lot of clear acrylic and I'm still using the 400 millimeter settings that I've got on the bolt for clear. But with the experience over the last year with the Nova Plus, I was able to get nice, clean, crisp engrave at 1000 millimeters per second. So at some point, I'm going to go back and see if I can play with those settings on the bolt to get them a little faster. So I guess what I'm saying is a lot of my settings are kind of in that middle because that's where I found good quality engraves. And over time and experience, you'll continue to play or you're going to tweak those different settings to try to get them to be more efficient 
or in essence a little quicker without losing any of the quality on that grave. It'll come. So I hope that kind of has helped provide a bit of understanding as to why a lot of the settings that I have or that you often ask for are never at the most highest, peakest, fastest speed the laser can go. And I kind of think it makes a lot of sense because if everything ran perfectly at 1200 millimeters a second, the lasers would probably only run at 1200 millimeters per second. There'd be no ability to vary the speed. And this is where you tend to find out whether you're using material test cards or you take a different approach to narrowing down your settings for different things. At the end of the day, speed by itself is not speed. With the lasers, I found you have to marry all three of those components together to find your fastest or most efficient engraver cut. But hopefully, if you just got your Thunder Laser Nova Plus, you've got somewhere to start. Have fun with your laser this week. Please be kind to each other, and I'll see you again on the next one. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.